One, two, three. So you want to start a vlog, you want to do YouTube, and you think to yourself, you need a new camera. You go online, you check the stars, watch the reviews, and now you got even more confused. With the amount of gear that's available today, it's easy to get lost and wonder what's the best camera to get. I know, because I've been there. And sometimes, these are the kind of questions I will get in my DMs from people and friends asking me to take a look at this particular camera that they're considering. So I decided to make a video to help you guys figure out whether or not the camera that you're looking at is going to be a good choice for vlogging. But before that, I wanted to give an update regarding the photo shoot donation drive that we've been doing for I think a week now or almost two weeks. So be sure to stay to the end of the video for that one. Now back to the topic at hand. The first thing that you're going to want to look at is if the camera can shoot at frame rate of 24 fps and at a resolution of full HD 1080p. Now the reason why you want to shoot at 24 frames per second is because this is industry standard for cinematic footages. This is what a lot of the Hollywood movies that we love is shot at and it's the frame rate that our eyes are most accustomed to whether you realize it or not. Cameras can shoot at different frame rates, 24 frames per second, 30 frames per second, 50, 60, 120 and even higher for the more expensive cameras. Remember that a video is nothing but a series of still images taken one after the other. And a frame rate basically tells you how many images there are between each interval. So 24 FPS means there are 24 images taken per second, 60 FPS means there are 60 images per second, and so on. Now the higher the FPS, the smoother and more high definition the footage looks. But that's not always what you want. I mean, it depends on what you want to achieve visually. There is a time and place for each of the different frame rates. So you don't necessarily have to be shooting at the highest frame rate available to your camera. Meanwhile, getting a camera that shoots at 1080p full HD resolution is important because not everyone has a 4K TV sitting at home. Like a lot of us still watch online videos on our phones and even though if you're watching on your computer, the monitor display market is still dominated by 1080p resolution monitors. So not everyone really gets to see the difference in quality and detail of a 4K clip between a 1080p video. This is why I don't think a camera that shoots in 4K is a requirement or an absolute necessity because I mean there are even documentaries, award-winning documentaries on Netflix right now that have been shot just in 1080p. So yeah, 4K and 120 frames per second seems like it's the rave nowadays, but it's not that important in creating good quality content. If you want to learn more about this, I actually did a video on this topic here on this channel, which you can watch right here um, if you want to check it out. The next thing you're going to want to look for is a camera with good AF. And by AF, I mean autofocus. Now, when you're doing these type of videos, you're usually going to be alone. So having a camera that handles the AF very well is going to be invaluable. You'll be able to make all the other basic stuff easier. Things like framing, composition, stabilizing your footage because you have one less thing to worry about and the camera is doing all the focus work for you. Different cameras at different price ranges have different AF speeds and it's actually one of the features that sets higher end models from lower end ones apart. For example, Sony and the latest Sony cameras have blazing fast AF speeds and they have features like IAF or eye autofocus which almost ensures 100% that your subject is going to be in focus. But what if the camera you can afford right now isn't extraordinarily fast? Is it unusable? Well, that's exactly the entire reason why I decided to shoot this whole video using two of my oldest cameras, the Canon 100D and the Canon EOS M10. At the time of making this video, the 100D is about 8 years old now, while the EOS M10 is about 5 years old, which means there's a total disparity in the technology you'll find in both of these cameras versus something like the Sony A6400, which I use now to shoot everything that I do. In fact, after reusing both of these cameras, I couldn't help but feel and notice the difference in AF speed between them and my Sony, uh, but I didn't find it to be unusable. Next thing on the list is a headphone jack. In one of my earlier videos for this channel, I mentioned that great video actually had less to do with image quality than audio quality. Audio is such an important part of the filmmaking process, but it's one that usually takes a backseat to video quality. You can pretty much get by with a video that has so-so image quality but really understandable audio 
but not the other way around. For instance, if you take this clip and remove the footage but still keep the audio, you're still gonna get a pretty good idea of the story or the message that I'm trying to convey. But flip that around and we keep this footage, but suddenly something happens. really can't understand. See what I mean? That's why having the ability to attach an external microphone like the Boya BYM1 shotgun mic or the Boya BYMM1 lav mic is going to be a great feature to have. I also did a review on both of these microphones in this channel so you might want to check them out too. The next thing I think you'd want is a flip out screen. Doing videos like this for YouTube is so much easier if you have a way to see yourself or monitor yourself. This is the area where my newer EOS M10 beats out my 100D because the, the EOS M10 has a flip out screen while the 100D only has a fixed LCD screen which means it takes a bit of work for me to set it up versus the M10. But like the lack of a microphone jack with the EOS M10, not having a flip out screen is easily addressable by just getting yourself an external monitor which of course is going to be an additional expense but Let's face it, having an external monitor on top of your camera makes you a little bit cooler if we're completely being honest here. All kidding aside though, I know lots of people without flip out screens that are able to make great quality visuals. Besides, having a screen flipped out towards you isn't always a good thing. There are also drawbacks like inadvertently looking at it instead of the lens in front of you. So you have to watch out for that as well. Flip out screens are great and they're, they definitely make the filmmaking process easier, but it's not a requirement. It also doesn't automatically make you a better filmmaker. But the good thing here though is that I think aside from the older Sony cameras, other manufacturers like Canon and Nikon have this feature already built in in a lot of their cameras. The last thing I think you'd want to look at is a camera with good battery life. Usually smaller cameras mean smaller batteries, which means shorter lifespan. And this is something that easily turns me off with some cameras. Because I want to be able to go out, take photos and videos when we're traveling, for example, without having to worry about replacing or bringing lots of batteries in the trip. I don't mind it as much for indoor stuff since I can just remove it, charge the old one, and then replace it with a the, with the spare battery. But is it a deal breaker? Well, it depends. Because there are actually some high-end cameras, really good cameras like the Sony A7S II, who, which is a legendary camera, low-light camera that lots of filmmaker vloggers use. But if this camera is notoriously known for having such bad battery performance that you often hear them say that they just buy lots of batteries anyway. And that's because the A7S II is really a great camera, so you just have to find a workaround for it. So these are the five features that I think a camera that you're considering should have if you're wanting to start out on YouTube. Now you'll notice these are things, that these are really basic stuff you'll find in almost all cameras. And that means that you can you're, you have lots of options both from the brand new market and the second hand market. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you won't be able to make good content if all you can afford right now isn't the latest and greatest. You can definitely make lots of good videos even with older cameras. Getting a new camera shouldn't be really that complicated because at the end of the day, it will come down to your budget and where you're most comfortable with. Some people love shooting on their phones. Some use small point and shoots and action cameras. Oh, me personally, I love shooting using mirrorless and DSLRs because that's where I'm most comfortable with. Of course, if you have the money to spend on the latest and newest gears, then by all means, go for it. Get what your money can afford because at the end of the day, the newest models or the higher end models do offer things that make filmmaking content creation easier. But if you're someone that has a limitation of their budget, then take comfort in the fact that the things that you really need are stuff that you'll find in the cameras that have been made in the last decade. Which means you have lots of great options to choose from without having to necessarily break the bank. By the way, I want to say thank you to all those who supported our photo shoot donation drive. You guys are the best. You're amazing. Uh, thank you for trusting this nobody in handling the needs of your business. So far, we've been able to raise around 10,000 pesos already and we still have a few more shoots lined up for that. And as promised, uh, the all 100% of the donations of the proceeds are gonna go to Kainat in Movement, which is a non-government organization that's trying their best to help out the victims of this typhoon. Thank you guys, it means so much to us, especially since 
this is the first time we're doing something like this. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Anyways, I'd love to hear your thoughts about this video. Do you think I missed out on some basic features that a vlogging camera should have? If you have any questions, also don't hesitate to leave them down. Write them down in the comment section below. Let's promote and create a healthy discussion space for people who are looking to buy their first cameras, wanting to upgrade. A good thing to remember here is that it's not always about the gear that you use. It's how you use them that matters. My name is Justin Espeo and if you like this video, please hit the like button. That will mean a lot to me. Subscribe or consider subscribing if you haven't already. And as always, thanks for watching.